let's work hard. Okay, because of a, a limited number of hours, limited number of hours, we have no time to go through all nanofabrication techniques. But let me tell you something. These nanofabrication techniques are well known from microelectronics. Because we have two groups, physical and chemical. Chemical synthesis, what you are doing, your wonderful job, wonderful results, with chemical synthesis. But they are also well known physical techniques, well known from microelectronics industry. RF sputtering or DC sputtering is known through ages. Thermal evaporation from solid state powders, known through ages, used by widely by microelectronic industry. Pulse laser deposition also used by microelectronics industry. <coughs> there are other techniques, as you already mentioned, very sophisticated. Equipment is expensive and job is not so easy. Langmuir Blodgett, some people are using this. The examples were shown during the plenary talk. But in general, all these techniques are well known. And you are, you, as, as far as I know, you have a RF sputtering in your institute. That's right. RF sputtering. Thermal evaporation from solid state powders also. You can build this. You can build this. Equipment could be home made. Nothing sophisticated. That's right. And you can get nice nice morphology. So what I'm going to do, I will give you this chapter. After the class. Krishna will uh, distribute, will copy, distribute among, and you can refresh your minds, okay? And we can go to particular uh, 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 topics. So this is a big, big chapter. Big uh, lecture, nanofabrication and patterning techniques. So Krishna will distribute. One second. Mm. How to enlarge this? Okay, so let's go to the second one. Okay, and then I'll ask this. Okay, so you will have, you will have, a, if you want to refresh your minds, you will have these slides uh, for further studies. Now, so um, we will go quickly through this. So it will be, uh, after introduction, you can study synthesis of semiconductor nanoparticles, synthesis of metallic nanoparticles. Metallic, mainly catalytic metals, noble metals, platinum, palladium, gold, to some extent, silver. Because for instance, for instance, I tell you something, when you are dealing with some optical techniques, like localized surface plasma resonance, silver gives much stronger effect than gold. But again, there is an issue how to protect silver surface towards the surrounding environment. And it's not easy 
but it's possible to do this. I am currently working with material scientists. There is a great material scientist in New Zealand, and we are working together how to encapsulate silver nanoparticle in order to be protected against towards environment. And we are close to the success. So, uh, we have to deal with this issue. Now, as I mentioned during this plenary talk, we are dealing with two types of approaches. The first one, widely used, thin films. Thin films composed of now different nanomaterials with different morphologies. Thin films. Second approach, single element, single nano element, single nano wire. Beautiful, gas sensitive sensor based on single nano wire. I mentioned it's possible to do this. You remember the example of sensing ammonia, the presence of humidity with this. Uh, uh, conductive polymer uh, nanowire connected with fiber papers. Yeah, possible to do this, but this is more difficult, more time consuming, and most of the people around the world are working on thin films, on thin films. So, formation of thin films, you can, you can study, growth of the one-dimensional nanostructure thin films, <laughs> and segmented one-dimensional thin films. Now, we have a powerful group of physical vapor deposition techniques, evaporation, sputtering, ion plating, pulse laser deposition, PLD, and chemical vapor deposition chemical vapor deposition, like low pressure CVD, plasma enhanced CVD, atomic layer CVD, atmospheric pressure plasma CVD, and other CVD techniques. As you already know, this is powerful technique to obtain a real graphene layer, which some people are saying is a silicon of 21st century. There are great expectations regarding this material great expectations. And you can also start to work on graphene. Why? Because you can buy graphene. There are companies who are already manufacturing graphene. You can do the job. Why not? You can do the job. But the only way to uh, fabricate graphene is using, <coughs> is using this CBD techniques. So, uh, Krishna will be so kind, he will distribute. That's right? Now. So let's introduce nano sensors. Um, again, which is this? Can you teach me, please? <laughs> Nanotechnology enabled sensors, because this is a correct term, nanotechnology enabled sensors. Not a nano sensors, but a nanotechnology enabled sensors. Because nano sensors implies the dimensions, but if in the case of thin film they are not. Morphology is a nano, but the sensor itself is not nano. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, term nano in SI units, 10 to the minus 9, in other words, 1 billion. It is derived from the ancient Greek word, Greek word dwarf, dwarf. So all these devices with dimensions lies in the nanoscale range. They are encompassed with nanotechnology. Now, let me say, tell you something. When the genius physicist Richard Feynman predicted 
that we will be able to manipulate single atoms. During his time, people were saying that he is crazy. He is a loco. It's better to avoid him, yeah? Because it was unimaginable. Time showed clearly that he was right. That he was right. And he used to say, there is a lot of space at the bottom. Paradox. A lot of space at the bottom. So, materials then fall in a nanostructured nano uh, nano uh, range, or this will have an average grain or face size in order of several nanometers. However, the term nanotechnology has come to embrace wider set of materials. So, those which have grains or clusters well below 100 nanometers, or those who have at least one dimension which size is less than 100 nanometers, may be deemed to be nanostructure. Now, there is a clear boundary, clear boundary between the molecular size sizes and nanoscales. However, comparing nano size molecules with atoms, whose diameters range between 0.01 to 0.5 nanometers, we can feel the difference. And here you have a scale, scale, scale. We have a uh, human dimension, cellular, head of the pin, head of the pin during the medieval times in Europe, during the medieval times, theologists, theologists were debating how many diablos could sit down on the tip of the pin. <laughs> there were big books regarding this. There were quarrels between them, you know, different opinions. It was the true fact. And uh, we have a we have a men's red blood cell, human hair, all these dimensions, scale, scale. Nanoparticles, quantum dots, carbon, carbon nanotubes, two to five nanometers. Nanostructure materials properties depends on <coughs> Four main features, four main features being size, distribution, boundaries and interfaces, chemical compositions, and interactions between constituent domains. So we have to take always these four main features into account, always. As you already know, nanotechnology is very multidisciplinary field, very multidisciplinary field, and uh, we have to collaborate with many experts from other areas. So, this is Richard Feynman. Oh, that's what he says in 1959. There is a plenty of room at the bottom. Plenty of room at the bottom. Uh, it was his visionary lecture in December 1959. He was the great thinker, great physicist, Nobel laureate. Now, why did the nanotechnology became noticeable? Because we have a, at our disposal a myriad of scientific and technical fields that now they are, are now very well established. For instance, high resolution electron microscopes, atomic force microscopes, molecular beam epitaxy equipment, nano imprint lithography, atom by atom manipulation, quantum effect knowledge, extended knowledge in cell biology nano-organic materials. And uh, all these are helping us to approach this area with confidence. So we are using many tools, many well-established tools. 
like we are using like we are using very well established fabrication techniques to fabricate nanomorphology based materials the same story with micro characterization techniques yeah the same story we have a well established SEM TEM atomic force microscopes X PS XRD Raman spectroscopy and others. They were developed a long time ago. And they are ready tools to use them in a nanotechnology. So our situation is really good. Really good. No need to invent uh, the words. Uh, now, let me... No, they are great expectations. They are great expectations. Nowadays, everybody wants to work in nanotechnology field. Everybody wants to work around the world. Because people see the enormous scientific and commercial potential. Of course, there are some positives of this activity. At the same time, there are serious drawbacks. We have to be familiar with these drawbacks. But I will tell you in a second. Uh, look, great expectations. What does it mean? People believe that they will have a better life when nanotechnology. <laughs> Dr. Alejandro is smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you something. Three years ago, I organized two international conferences in Australia. And of course, they are be, these conferences, IMCS and uh, one of the Asian conferences, they were one after other. A few hundred people from all over the world, they were discussing progress. Every two years we observed progress. We observed progress, fascinating progress. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the plenary lecture, yeah, after plenary lecture, it was the discussion, and I asked a very innocent question. That's great, great. We observed this progress, fascinating progress. But the question is, are we, human beings, more happy than two years ago? Oh, people are very embarrassed by this question. <laughs> Nobody could say, yes, we are more happy. Not really. The question is being in a philosophical mode. Nanotechnology will give us more happiness? I don't know. I'm not sure. <coughs> Rajesh, what do you think? I think happiness is within us. Is? Within us. Yeah. We don't have to search outside. <laughs> Look. <laughs> this is heresy. <laughs> Rajesh, you, can, you cannot express such opinion on international because arena, because <laughs> most of the people believe that <laughs> happiness in a, is in the progress of nanotechnology. But let me tell you a story. When people, this is a human nature, 21st century, when people sniff money, they are very active. And look, one of the most promising markets in nanotechnology is a cosmetic industry, yeah. cosmetic yeah. industry. As you know very well, with great respect to women, we cannot live without women, yeah. impossible. That's right. <laughs> One floor up, yesterday we met a gentleman, Mexican scientist working in the computing area. He has a Polish wife, you know. So we had a discussion and he said, my Polish wife spent one month in Europe. She's coming back today from Europe. I said, congratulations, because your misery living alone will end. <laughs> yeah? And I uh, told him the proverb, very old proverb, used in many cultures around the world, counting on your sense of humor. This says like this. Life with woman is difficult, but without woman, even worse. 
<laughs> That's right. This is the wisdom. Coming back to the cosmetic, in cosmetic industry. Cosmetic industry. As you know, all women around the world want to be beautiful. So they are buying cosmetics. Sometimes if they have no money, they are even able to fast, but they are buying cosmetics. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Two years ago, I was sitting during the lunchtime at UCLA with uh, American scientists develop, developing nanotechnology-based products for cosmetic industry. And they are very close to commercialization, very close. Also, these people are working, they are working for health protection. They realize that some of the nanoparticles, for instance, uh, silver nanoparticles, when they are introduced to our body, they have special uh, properties. My wife will help me um, regarding coccinogation. Uh, um, uh, let me tell you this in a... Utlenianie. Uh, yeah, on, on. No, but the. Uh, sorry, I will use the other language. Jeżeli w ciele zachodzą procesy, no wiesz, chodzi o ten. Wolne rodniki, właśnie. I don't know how to translate it in pun. Oh, that's that's the pun. That's the pun. I did drink too enough coffee. Okay, antioxidant. So silver nanoparticles can act as anti antioxidants. As you know, oxidation occurring in our body is causing aging, aging, aging. Yoga is slowing aging. That aging is. This is natural process, mm -hmm. but we can slow. Excellent. We can slow. So, and I knew very well, I knew very well from other people, very honest scientists, that they are enormous side effects. From one side, positive effect, antioxidation. From other side, nobody knows what, what, what we, like with all drugs, what the side effects will cause in a two years time or five years time or 10 years time. It is very likely that this product, will be, which will be on the market very soon, that this product will cause enormous damage to people who are using this. Similar story in cosmetic industry. People want to make money very fast. They are promising a lot, promising a lot. So this is the negative dark side of nanotechnology. This is the dark side of nanotechnology. It's a similar story like with a nuclear energy. When it was developed, first was developed for defense. Hiroshima, atomic bomb, and later peaceful applications, yeah? Nuclear power. But uh, some American scientists, very honest scientists, working in Los Alamos, they were reluctant to, to, to uh, release their results because they knew very well that it could be used for uh, military applications. And they were right. But President Truman, during this time, pushed them very hard. And, you know, he monitored them to release these results. And as a result, Hiroshima. So. <clears throat> Uh, this is philosophical statement that, honestly, we don't know if nanotechnology will improve our life quality. We don't know. There are many promises at this stage. What will happen? Let's be very careful. Let's be very careful. But this area is very fascinating. It's really a lot of fun. You know, it's a very hectic area, and it is great that you are working in this area. This is really great, because 
you have very good results and we will move forward together, hopefully, very soon. Okay? I already told uh, uh, Krishna that I sent email and transducers will be here very soon in Mexico City so we can achieve some progress. Right? Effects on our life. <clears throat> Ah, uh, look, uh, again, philosophical mode. Laptops at home, internet, mobile phones, great progress, yeah? Mm -hmm. During cold days, I was sending fax, fax, no, before letters, mail, mail. Mm -hmm. It reached Melbourne 25 years ago, in a two weeks time. The guy was sitting on this one week, replying in the next two weeks. Now I'm sending email, send cup of conductometric transducers to such and such address in Mexico City. Great, this is good, positive. But the question is philosophical question. All these all this inventions, home computers, internet, mobile phones, did they, did they really improve the quality of our life? It's questioning. It's questioning. Really questioning. The same story with nanotechnology. We are not able to predict in which direction it will go. So, this is this is take this is what some, let's say, using my limited Spanish language. That's what some nanotechnology aficionados claim, yeah? They are claiming that in the next decade or so, our lives will again, will be revolutionized by products realized through the advances that nanotechnology will provide. Maybe, maybe. I am a little bit skeptical, maybe. So in summary, in summary. Solving problems in electronics economy. Of course, of course. Nanotechnology, look. But currently there is a limit in computing power using technology based on silicon. Yeah? Because silicon has many drawbacks. From physics point of view, one of major is that is an indirect band gap. Indirect band gap. Some people are currently coming back to Germany because it's a direct band gap. Definitely some semiconductors like, for instance, gallium arsenide at much faster, the mobility of holes and electrons is much higher than for silicon. So people are working on computers based on, on this material, but Technology is not under such control like silicon technology. But computing power for silicon is limited. This is the situation for today. So, people are developing molecular computers. Mole molecular computers. Nanoscience, molecular science is coming to computing technology to design much faster computers, much faster computers. This is one of the, this is one of the major directions. This is one of the major directions. Uh, so, uh, people are predicting that silicon-based industry will become stagnant in the next two years time, in 2015. Saturation. Plateau. Nothing more can be obtained. People are obsessed by this progress. Progress. To do everything faster, to do everything with the lower cost, and so on, so on. So, definitely the future lies in a, in a uh, nanotechnology. And they are predicting 
these aficionados, they are predicting that this stagnation will cause a big disruption in the economy of the world. Big disruption. Stock exchange could collapse. Could collapse. So, predictions that organic and molecular sat transistor will merge and nanotechnology will play a pivotal role to ensure that rule remains valid. So this is the broader picture. It's not only about sensors. It's not only about sensors. It's not only about gas sensors that surface to volume ratio is higher. There is a great dynamic performance that we can sense single molecules. It's not only about this. This is only a much broader picture. There are many areas could be, to some extent, revolutionized by nanotechnology. But again, let's be careful. There's a big discussion about this issue around the world because some people are extremely positive. Some people are saying that our life quality will improve, and blah, blah, and so on, so on. Yeah, others are saying, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Let's, you know, let's discuss this in detail. <laughs> let's discuss in detail, yeah? There is a country in the world, Bhutan, next to India, mm -hmm. India. The ruler, king, they introduced special measure of the life quality in Bhutan. Yeah? He's not interested in any so-called progress. He believes that people happiness, this is the major factor, people happiness. And to go to Bhutan, very expensive trip because you have to pay a lot of money. He's not interested in the hordes, hordes of tourists. He's interested in the rich people visit. So, definitely, definitely nanotechnology could have an impact on our health and medical diagnostic, manufacturing, construction industries, social interactions. I believe in a very negative way in a very negative way, yeah? Not in a positive way, but you can disagree. And, and also future conflicts. Future conflicts. Uh, Ex-US President Bill Clinton, he uh, advocated nanotechnology development in a 2000 year speech at California Institute of Nanotechnology. Market. Revenues of over $1 trillion per year by 2015, predicted by National Science Foundation, US. $1 trillion, a lot of money. Different applications for nanotechnology. Different applications. Now, they are predictions, they are predictions uh, for between for 2010, three years ago, different predictions and uh, approach. We have to change our way of thinking completely because our way of thinking, to some extent, is a macro way of thinking, macro. We are not used to think in a nanoscale. Nanoscale. You remember this example which I gave you, yeah, regarding employing noise as a source of information. Noise phenomena occurring on the molecular level could be a powerful tool, tool to get the information. Yeah? And I said, you cannot repair your watch using ordinary hammer. Very difficult task. You have to use the special tool. The same story in nanotechnology. We have to change our way of thinking. And again, Leonardo da Vinci, a Renaissance man. Yeah? A Renaissance man. Different times. It was 16th century. Now it's the 21st century. So we need the researchers with strong knowledge in different disciplines. So very multidisciplinary nature of nanotechnology. 
one of the first researchers uh, who this particular, this Robert Albert Einstein calculated the size of the sugar molecule with very simple experiment, experimental data on the diffusion of sugar in water. Uh, so what the Fritz in his book and that understanding nanotechnology says, we need to open our eyes like him. Simple phenomenon can be used for the investigation of the it phenomena in nanotechnology. Sometimes, again, that's what I'm always saying. Simple approach, simple approach. Simple approach based on a common science could give us good solutions. <coughs> again, Feynman, in this famous lecture, what he said, what I want to talk about is the problem of manipulating and controlling things in a small scale. What I have demonstrated is that there is a room that you can decrease the size of things in a practical way. I now want to show that there is a plenty of room. I will not now di discuss how we are going to do it, but only what is possible in principle. We are not doing this simply because we haven't yet gotten around to it. Arrange the atoms one by one the way we want. And uh, we, are going, we are able to do this now. The, as a result, the problem of manufacturing and the reproduction of materials will be very different in the nearest future. It's already different. It's already different. Bottom up, bottom down. Top down, bottom up, top down. This approach this approach is very useful for nanotechnology. Top down approach is mentioned when dimensions in nanotechnology is becoming smaller and smaller. Yeah? Nowadays the metal oxide transistor technology futures they have reached dimensions of 40 nanometers. 40 nanometers. So as a result, fast computing is realistic, is very realistic. Bottom-up approaches, in contrast, have been known many years in microelectronics industry. Assembling single molecules <coughs> to fabricate clusters <coughs> with nanodimensions, such a fabrication of famous nanotubes. Nanotubes, carbon nanotubes. And these two approaches, bottom-up and top-down, are meeting each other in our time. They, both of them, have to coexist and help each other. Help each other to get <coughs> better understanding of nanotechnology and better results. Now, nanosensors. I already mentioned that there are several nanosensors developed for mechanical and magnetic quantities. But the majority of research in nanotechnology-enabled sensors is conducted on chemical and biosensors. Chemical and biosensors in both gas and liquid media. Significant advantages over conventional sensors as they offer greater sensitivity, lower cost, reduced power consumption. Very important parameter, also not listed in this, in this list. Power consumption, yeah? We'll discuss conductometric sensors tomorrow. You will see the standard conductometric transducers offers power consumption in the range of few hundred milliwatts. Few hundred milliwatts. So the first glance looks low. Of course, if we are using single element, it's OK. But when you are going to measure air pollution around Mexico City using this single element, the total power consumption could be substantial. So we have to find out the means to decrease substantially power consumption. And we will discuss solutions which are allowing to decrease this power consumption 
by at least one order of magnitude. So it will be much smaller. Uh, stability, stability, and numerous applications. So these nanotechnology and imp sensors find applications in several novel fields. Sensing single molecules, single molecules. In the lecture uh, in which we discuss receptor-based molecular sensors, I will show you how to mimic mother nature to some extent, to some extent. Because we, we will never be able to mimic to full extent the olfactory system of the dogs which are used in the airports to detect single molecules of drugs used by smugglers or, or drug addicts. I do not believe that, but we can reach, we can be to some extent, to some extent, we, we can reach half of the way. We are, will be never able to mimic other creatures, living creatures, which have olfactory system which is superior, superior. I will give you an example of the silkware, silkware moth bombix, this creature producing silk, silk, during the mating season, silkworm mavbombix can detect one molecule, one molecule of the sex attractant bombicol diluted in present in the 10 to 17 air molecules. And it can pinpoint this molecule from the distance of nine kilometers away. This is how mother nature works. And some people, some people believe that they are able to mimic this. I am saying, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <coughs> now, so, sensing single molecules, possible. Graphene allows to sense single molecule of, of <coughs> gas or vapor. But let me tell you something, let me, make, uh, let me make one remark. There is extremely hectic activity in nanosensor field. And even Nobel laureates are making mistakes. Let me tell you something, that Novoselcev, who invented graphene, who, current, who works at UMIST, Manchester, UK, when he published his paper in which he proved that he is able to detect one single molecule, he made mistake in experiment. It was mistake. Yeah? He never admitted this, but we know at this stage that it was mistake. It was mistake. So, sensing single molecules, biohazard, toxic chemicals, gas sensors, process control, Diagnostic. Now, toxic chemicals. Let me make one remark. What does it mean, toxic chemicals? When you are going to the department store to buy food, yeah, food producers are putting labels, yeah, saying there is no cholesterol, yeah, no cholesterol, a certain amount of sugar, yeah especially in Mexico, because people have sugar here, that's right, very much. And they are saying, concentration of such and such toxic <coughs> substance is well below the threshold level. So it's safe, you can buy this product, yeah? That's what they are saying. They are trying to encourage you to spend your money. Be careful, be careful. Why? Because when you are eating this product day by day or month by month, you accumulate this toxic substance in, inside your body to such extent that it overruns the 
safety threshold. As a result, you are getting cancer. So it's not, it is not safe at all. But what does it mean? That we, can, we have to sense the level of concentration level of these toxic substances. Yeah? Food producers are crooks. Crooks, simple statement. I shouldn't state this, but they are crooks everywhere in Abla. So we will continue tomorrow morning. <coughs> if there are any questions or we can discuss, I enjoy immensely yesterday discussion because, you know, once again, once again, you can achieve a lot here in your labs in nanotechnology. A lot. That's what I'm sure. That's what I'm sure. And I will be very glad to help to establish a collaboration with scientists working here. And honestly speaking, I will be very more than glad to come back to Mexico for many reasons. Not only technology based reasons. Any questions or we can discuss some issues, I will be happy. Please interact with me. Because I said at the beginning, everything must be clear, must be clear on the spot. <coughs> Please. Uh, only a comment about the application of the nanotechnology in cosmetic, in the cosmetic field. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, there are different brands, Correct. French and Swiss. Correct. I know very well too, right? Because yeah. I use it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, they are using uh, different nanoparticles of silver, gold, platinum, at least these three, no? Uh, uh, for creams, no? For anti aging. Right. Anti-aging, yeah, <laughs> yeah. big market, big yeah. market. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. everybody wants to be young to the last day of his life, of course. Yes, but I suppose when they uh, sell these products, they have proof, or they have uh, made proofs uh, about the inconvenient, inconvenience in the, in the health. Huh? Of, of the so they are stating that these products are absolutely safe yes. for health. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose so, because <laughs> I have read about this and they mentioned that they have made proofs in rats, in rats, no? in order to see the, the negative effects. Then I believe in them because it's convenient for me, <laughs> yes. but I don't know if they are telling the truth or... <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> good point. That's the, the good point. In the business only. Look, look, several drugs, <coughs> several drugs were introduced to the market, yeah? And we know very well that after a couple of years, couple of years, these products were withdrawn from the market because of the side effects. And pharmaceutical company, traditional pharmaceutical company, they tested these drugs on rats or mouses. But look, testing drugs on rats or mouses is not sufficient. We human beings are different, yes. completely different. The drug could be safe for mouse, but could be very unsafe for, for us. And what they are claiming, what they are claiming, I am skeptical because I don't know. Honestly speaking, I don't know how it will affect our health when I'm using such a product because nowadays men are also buy, around the world are buying cosmetic cosmetic uh, products because they also want to be beautiful and young. Yeah? It's not yeah, like the during cold days. So, they are driven by money. They are driven by money and we have to be very careful what they are stating. We have to be very careful because we don't know. We don't know, really. And I tell you something, when I am dealing, let me make general remark. When I am dealing with different scientists around the world, there are two sorts of people. Most of the people will never admit that they don't know something, yeah? They pretend to know everything. They are very you know, certain. They believe that they already know the truth. Only few people, great caliber, when you are dealing with them, 
For instance, I told you that when I worked in France, my neighbor was a Nobel laureate. I had discussions with him. He was very <coughs> kind to spend some time with me. When I was discussing with him on few occasions, he stated, when I asked him a question, he stated honestly, I don't know. This is the caliber of the scientist. Do you know the person who knows everything? How the pharmaceutical industry could stay at this stage when these products are used single years, single years, yeah? How they know what the side effects are? I don't know myself. And this is the reason they want to make money and that's it, that's it. And later on, some people could suffer enormously from health implications. So let's be careful, let's be careful. But the major factor is, the major factor is, again, the major. If we'll be more happy with the progress in nanotechnology. I wish that we will be, but when I'm taking metro or tram or bus, when I look at the people around, I tell you something. All these youngsters, youngsters are watching their mobile phones. All of them, all of them, you know, pushing knobs, watching screen, very hectic activity. <laughs> they are not interested in surrounding world at all, at all. I am interested what's going on around, what sort of people they are, what sort of, what sort of colors, what sort of designs around. This is fascinating for me. This is external world. Mobile phone is a tool. I'm using this one second or switching off. But they are using this 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours. This makes them more happy. They are using Facebook, <laughs> internet. Tell me, what is their vocabulary to communicate? Vocabulary. 500 words. Enough. Enough to communicate, yeah? Quickly. Later on, these people are coming to my lab. They have good results and uh, writing thesis. They are not reading books because they have no time to read books. <laughs> they are watching TV and watching their mobile phones, screens. That's their activity, major activity. And also TV using games. That's right? <laughs> games. Games. Nice, relaxed games coming from the US. Anyway, so. Uh, they, have, they are writing thesis, this is the disaster. Yes. Disaster, really disaster, because I am, not, I am not paid by university to write the thesis for them. It's their business. I can help, but yeah, let me give you an example. I had a student from Malaysia. Malaysia, in Malaysia, he got a Malaysian government scholarship. And, uh, Okay, he, I work hard with him, he got good results finally, he published few papers, it was good. Writing thesis, God, you know, I started to suffer enormously on a daily basis. It was like this, he wrote something, I said, we are sitting together, I said, please read this sentence. What's wrong in this sentence? I was looking at sentence, yes. Nothing wrong. <laughs> Nothing wrong. It's a perfect sentence. I said, please read this again. No. Nothing wrong. I said, listen, are you reading books sometimes? Ah, not enough time. He says, not enough time. I said, without reading books, your vocabulary will be very poor. You know, you know what he did toward the end? He hired, he paid money to professional writer. <laughs> professional writer. But professional writer is not familiar with the merit. He is not nanotechnology expert. So he, he did some job, he taken money, and still the thesis were not ready for submission. So I show him several things. And I told him there is a danger because if this thesis will go to examiners, 
they will write, you know, seven pages of detailed remarks. I don't need this. Because later, 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 toward the end of the day, I will be accused that I didn't pay any attention to the quality of his writing. So finally, finally, with the great difficulties, with the great difficulties, his theses were accepted. But if he learned something from this exercise, we were speaking different languages, different wavelengths. Probably he was thinking, what this character is talking about? What he wants from me? Why he is harassing me? I am doing a good job, what he wants from me? You know, he doesn't understand what, what I'm saying. So, look, this is a progress. This is a progress, that modern technology. Before, when I'm interacting with people, I like to interact face to face. Face to face. This is the best way in which human beings should interact. Of course, if I need to send conductometric transducer, I'm sending email because they will arrive very quickly. That's right. But interaction, old fashioned ways to face interaction is the best. So be very skeptical with these products, with the promises, with the markets, all this sort of stuff. But this is very general, general. Uh, remarks. Thank you very much for your coming and see you tomorrow 10 o'clock. Thanks a lot. <coughs> Are you available later? I will pop into your office, okay? Good. In the next couple of minutes, okay? Thank you.